The Florida Historical Society presents Florida Frontiers is made possible in part by the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund and by Florida's Space Coast Office of Tourism, representing destinations from Titusville to Cocoa Beach to Melbourne Beach. The Space Coast has a diverse 72 miles of beach, including surf towns and sea turtle nests. We have inspiring attractions, including the Kennedy Space Center, Brevard Museum of History and Natural Science, and the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge. More information is available at www.visitspacecoast.com. Florida history and culture from the Ice Age to the Space Age is on display at the Brevard Museum of History and Natural Science, located at 2201 Michigan Avenue in Cocoa. The museum has nature trails through 20 acres of three Florida ecosystems. The People of Windover exhibition features information about Florida's prehistoric past and actual artifacts used between 7,000 and 8,000 years ago. More information at brevardmuseum.org. Welcome to Florida Frontiers, presented by the Florida Historical Society. I'm Ben Brokemarkle. In 1905, hundreds of Greek sponge divers and their families were brought to Tarpon Springs. Today, there are more Greek people per capita in Tarpon Springs than in any other American city. Coming up on Florida Frontiers, we'll explore the history of Greek culture in Tarpon Springs. When the first Greeks came to Tarpon Springs, a thriving town was already in place. Pioneer fishermen and farmers started settling in the area in the mid-1800s, and the Orange Belt Railway came to town in 1887. And in the early 1880s, it really took off because Hamilton Diston bought millions of acres in Florida, and he hired a former territorial governor of Arizona, Anson Safford, to come in and sell land to wealthy northerners. So it quickly became a resort town, and many of the people here also worked in service occupations dealing with the large estates of some of the wealthy northerners. Also in the 1880s, in the late 1880s, John Cheney, who was a, a northern-born businessman in town, realized that selling sponges would be quite a good business to get into. And he originally hired um, Anglo and African Americans in town. Um, many African Americans were attracted to the area to work in the sponge business uh, coming from Key West and the Bahamas because they had a knowledge of how to gather and process sponges. Cheney hired a man named John Kokoris to help build the sponge industry in Tarpon Springs. At first, sponges were harvested with long poles as they were in the Keys, but eventually Kokoris brought in sponge divers from Greece who wore canvas suits with metal helmets. Tarpon Springs quickly surpassed the Florida Keys to become the largest sponge port in the United States. Kokoris realized uh, within a couple years that the way they were gathering sponges was not optimum. If they used deep sea diving techniques like they used in Greece, they could really quadruple the, the production. So um, he and his brothers got together and uh, with some financial help from Cheney, brought over an entire crew from Greece to go down and try the technique. And it was spectacularly successful. And uh, that was in 1905, June 1905. By the end of the year, another, I don't know, 500 men had come from Greece learned about it uh, from letters, from newspaper articles, whatever, uh, they all came. Uh, things, uh, economics were not great in Greece at that time, so they were happy to come here, and it started a chain migration that continued for decades. I came uh, in the States, I stayed in New York for a year or so. I worked construction up there, painting. And a friend of mine who arrived in Florida as a tourist, and we found a tarp of springs. And it was just like another part of Greece for us. And we stay over here. Both of us get married over here. And I started working uh, as a sponge diver for Mr. George Belleris, 
But I was a diver from the old country. I would shoot fish. I was a free diver. It was uh, very easy for me to adapt in sponging. The only thing I have to do to see how the sponges look like it. I have no problem for diving. I knew how to dive from the old country. So, and I started sponging for somebody else, like I say, for eight years. And then I built myself a little boat. I worked that for seven years. And then I built this boat over here. And Mr. George Sarukos built this boat here in the Tarpo Springs. And the only boat, Greek design boat, fiberglass glass in the whole United States. You find another boat, uh, the same design as this, but uh, most of them, the wood boats, they're not a fiberglass. glass. This boat is uh, the whole boat fiberglass. glass. The Anastasi is the last sponge boat in use in Tarpon Springs that has a traditional Greek design. You can take any ocean, you can take any waves and any sea. Impossible to sink this boat unless uh, some pipe broke down in a hole and then water come into the boat to sink it. The other way is no way to sink this vessel. And uh, what makes them best and better is the design. It's a Greek ancient design boat and made to take the waves, to take the ocean, doesn't fight the water. You might get a little bit rock and roll, as we call it, but that's the way it is. It doesn't fight the water. It goes with the ocean, goes with the waves, any size, any way, any direction. And that's what makes this boat special. With the influx of Greek sponge divers and their families to Tarpon Springs, businesses and institutions to serve them were established, including restaurants, grocery stores, bakeries, and coffee houses. Today, the town attracts a lot of tourists, but the Greek culture here remains authentic. People have upheld it to an amazing degree for more than 100 years, to the extent that when people come from Greece, they find people here uh, with a more conservative culture than they have in the home islands in Greece, Be, as usually happens with immigrant groups. On the periphery or in the diaspora, they maintain an older form of the culture, usually. Um, so people go from birth uh, and baptism and uh, various customs, birthday customs, name day customs, daily food, uh, learning to dance, learning about the music, um, uh, working in different um, businesses in town that are related to Greek culture uh, until they die. Uh, Greek culture goes with them. You know, they're ushered to the grave, literally, you know, by the priests and with the rituals of the Greek church. Uh, it's absolutely authentic. Now, there's always a difference here and everywhere else between what they call um, front door culture and back door culture as regards the tourist industry. Um, uh, culture isn't really staged here, but it's much richer here if you're part of the community than if you're just looking at the shops. On the other hand, I don't think tourists really take full advantage of uh, talking to people in the community that they might find in Greek town or along the sponge docks. In fact, the sponge fishermen are some of the best ambassadors of Greek culture because despite a heavy workload, they are ready to stop almost any time to talk to people about what they do. Well, sponging is, uh, is nothing new. Sponging is a 3,000 years old uh, thing, you know. I mean, they're sponging way back there by the Alexander the Great, the ancient Greeks, they knew about the wool sponge. So uh, when I came over here in the Tarpo Springs, I paid $2 to go see the sponge diver. I see how they do it. A couple of months later, I went to the same as another boat as a cook. And then I see them diving. I see how the sponges look like it. I learn from them how you clean it, how you process the sponge. And it doesn't take much if you see men, if you love the ocean, it doesn't take you much if you don't get seasick out there, if you like to be in the water, you learn easy. It doesn't take me no time at all just about it to learn how to clean the sponge. It's very easy. The first day you put them in a deck, you cover them with a blanket so the sun don't dry it out. And the whole animal matter the second day starts deteriorating slowly and whatever they have in there, the animal matter you call them, comes out as a glory, we call them, thick as the honey, and it smells a little bit. And the fourth day, we wash them one by one with a lot of pressure water, and all we get out of it, the skeleton of the organism. Because the sponge doesn't look like this in the bottom. If you look for something like this in the bottom of the sea, you're never going to find a single one of them. They all have a skin, and they're thick inside as a lever. They have the animal matter. Actually, sponge is a little pump in the water, collects plankton, 
pumps the water all day long and collects plankton. It's an animal matter, the lowest matter animal, but they never have no feelings or nerve system or any blood to feel hurt. Just like a mushroom, you can say, and you cut them with a knife, then they, they regrow again. And the process, like I say, is very easy. If you catch up with it, there's nothing to it. Just to be Greek and, and be part of the Greek community with the sponge docks and the, um, the culture that we have down there since the early 1900s with the boats and the, and the sponges and my mom worked down there and, um, you know, we would just, it, it was just a big community. Everybody knows everybody, you know, your kids went down there and just everybody knew everybody. It's just, it's just wonderful being Greek because everybody's family, whether it's someone that you didn't know or someone that you've known since you were a little girl, there's still Thea, which means aunt, and it's respect and just love. I think, that's what I think. That's going to last forever, man. That thing's not going to go away, never. Long as the Greeks. If you're born in a, like, in a country, you're never going to forget your native language, you know, like me. You can learn English, Chinese, and any kind of language you want, but uh, you're never going to forget the language you're born with. So, I am, I can't forget my Greek. My son speaks Greek, not much as me, but he does. Now i got a three grandkids, which I love them to death, and I teach them. And also they go to school and they learn Greek. Hope someday they're going to learn enough to communicate and they don't need nobody to learn the grandpa's language, the Greek language. They feel Greeks, they love Greece, even if they're not being there yet, but they know from the dairy and me, so they're proud to be Greeks. So everybody proud to be a Greek. I feel great and proud myself to be a Greek. And I'm American citizen, but that makes never make me to forget who I am and where I come from. And that will be forever. I'm 40 years or so in the United States and 18 in Greece. All my friends and everything, all my life happened over here. Can't deny that. I'm proud to be an American, but I'm a Greek American. This is uh, like a Greek village here in America. Uh, in Greek, we call it the Greek Horyo, the Greek village. and. Uh, the people are very, uh, very much in tune uh, to their culture and their heritage. Uh, not only the adults that came from Greece, but they passed it on to other generations. And even the younger generations still appreciate that. Uh, and this parish is a very unique parish because it has held on to all of those, it, uh, all of those traditions and and customs and what have you. And that's what makes this such a, a wonderful parish because it has held on to those unique cultural and traditional and religious uh, things that are all part of it. St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Cathedral has been an integral part of the Tarpon Springs community since the early 20th century. A unique epiphany celebration has developed here, and every January 6th, thousands of people converge on Tarpon Springs to experience this religious tradition. Thanks to the sponge divers, uh, we have this parish here. It wasn't a cathedral then. It didn't become a cathedral till later. But one of the things that they began right away, being a nautical people, was to uh, have the traditional uh, dive for the cross. St. Nicholas has evolved over time. The Neo-Byzantine style cathedral was expanded in 1943 to include colorful stained glass and marble from Greece in a domed basilica. This was very typical of the churches that were built in America during the 40s, early 50s. In fact, I am originally from the Detroit area and there was a parish that I attended in Detroit and if I walked in to that parish or that church building and I walk into this I'm like the same place. Uh, it's very typical of that uh, of those of the structures during that time period as I said basilica with a dome. The Greek Orthodox Church can trace its roots back to the earliest church established during the Roman Empire. At its height the empire encompassed the entire Mediterranean basin including what are now Europe, Turkey, the Middle East and North Africa. When the empire collapsed in the year 476, Christian centers in the East and West gradually began developing separate traditions. Up to the year 1054, there was only one church. Um, we name that church, as we say in our creed, the one holy Catholic, Catholic with a small c, meaning universal, and apostolic church. There was one church, 
It was a holy church, it was universal church, and it was founded from, and it was came from the apostles. So there was just one church that, that, um, that existed. There were five centers of Christianity at that time. Four of them were in the east, being Constantinople, um, Antioch, Jerusalem, uh, Alexandria, and only one in the west, and of course that was Rome. Well, given the geographics of the two areas, and there were no jet planes at that time <laughs> to take you from one place to the other, uh, sometimes rulings that uh, happened, especially at the ecumenical synods that occurred all in the east, it took a while to get to the west, and so each area started to develop in a different way. Uh, though east uh, centers being closer together were, were more unified. The west uh, wasn't as unified. And so finally in 1054, the church severed. The west became known as the Roman Catholic Church, and the east became known as the Eastern or Greek Orthodox Church. In the Greek Orthodox tradition, Epiphany is the commemoration of the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River when the Holy Spirit appeared to him as a dove. Traditionally, it's celebrated in the church, uh, and uh, it, it has to do uh, now with the blessing of the waters. And that's very important for a sea-going community, as Tarpon Springs is and was. Uh, because there was a traditional belief that between Christmas and Epiphany, the waters were not hallowed, and uh, the blessing of the waters was necessary so that mariners could go out and safely conduct their business again on uh, the ocean. This traditional for, Bapt for Epiphany Day goes on since 1905 and keeps going, and every year it gets better and better, and more people and more people, and the Greeks from all over the United States they come here special for this day, to celebrate Epiphany. In the Greek language, it's Theophania. Theophania means the God showing and seeing it. When it comes out, the Spirit comes as the white dove when they baptize the Jesus. That's what Theophania in the Greek language means. Now over here, they call them Epiphany. In Tarpon Springs, the Epiphany celebration begins on January 5th with the blessing of the boats at the sponge docks downtown. The more formal commemoration takes place the next day at St. Nicholas Cathedral. Well, we uh, of course begin in the morning with our, our regular service, uh, the Matins, followed by the Divine Liturgy, which is comparable to the Mass in the Roman Church. Uh, then there is the Greater Blessing of Water here in the Cathedral. After that is done, uh, we have a procession that we will go down to the bayou, and uh, there, uh, His Eminence, the Archbishop, will bless the di young divers. They are boys the ages of 16 through 18. And then they will the boys will make their way into the water and onto the small boats, the dinghies that are there. And uh, we will go on to the platform where His Eminence will do a short service and uh, throw the cross into the bayou and the divers will then attempt to retrieve. The young man who retrieves the, um, the cross receives the blessing for the year. The procession leaves St. Nicholas Cathedral around noon, walking a block to the shores of Spring Bayou. Thousands of spectators are already waiting for the procession to arrive. We pray to you, O loving Lord, to bless this our annual gathering, and to you we ascribe glory now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Young men, arrive. Go, go, go. 
for me, I dove because uh, my yaya always told me to dive. You know, she was always into it. And uh, sadly, in 2013, she did pass. And uh, I always felt that I should, in her honors, always dive for the cross. And being able to retrieve the cross today is such an honor in her name and uh, not only my family. And it's just a great feeling. It's, it's the biggest blessing that we could ever have in our family. Other than the day him being born, this is like the most wonderful day of my life and his. Anderson is the first one in our family and uh, we are just so, so proud of him. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's very emotional. Um, his grandparents, he's lost his grandparents in the past few years and we know that they were in heaven holding God's hands watching him to get that cross today because this would have been the most important thing to my mom ever. Since we were little, we used to come down to the, you know, down here early in the morning and watch our friends dive. And as children, there was three girls growing up, and we would, re, you know, when we had children, we were so excited that, you know, they would be able to come and and do this celebration, and that one of them was going to catch it. And I just can't believe it was my son. He was quite blessed today. Growing up in the Greek culture of Tarpon Springs has made preserving that heritage part of many young people's lives. Greek is very important to me. My um. My yaya always taught me to be Greek. Uh, my mom is very, very uh, in the Greek culture. You know, we always go to church on Sunday. We're very good about um, being Greek, and uh, it's just an important part of my life. It always has been since I was little. The one who finds the cross is believed to have a year of blessings. So um, then after he finds the cross, uh, they go out, he's carried on the shoulders of his compatriots uh, back to the church for uh, another uh, special blessing by the um, archbishop. And um, then afterwards there is a glendy or a party that's held at the church center now. Um, part of what happens that's interesting at that uh, is that the young men who dove for the cross also go about to the visitors um, singing a hymn about the Jordan River while asking for donations to the church. It's an old traditional hymn. Uh, also at the Glendy, you know, of course they have food and they have some dance performances and also people get up to do social dancing. Much like the Cuban culture in Miami, the Greek culture in Tarpon Springs seems to be largely isolated from outside influences, retaining its unique heritage and identity. This tradition has been passed down from the native Greeks to their offsprings born here, and their offsprings, and their offsprings, and uh, that's what, may, as I said, makes it so unique. They hold on to it. Always want to be somebody here and they're going to sponge. This thing here never going to die. Unless the whole sponges disappear and they go from Mexico, like they did way back then with the red tide. Long as a few sponges out here, they're always going to be somebody over here. They might not be the same kind of style boat like the one I have, but they will have a, some kind of boat in some kind of rig. They're always somebody going to be able to go get a few sponges out there. I don't think it's fading. I think culture always changes. And I see so much of Greek culture here, and I go into people's homes, and I see how the parents, younger than me, are raising their children in very traditional ways, um, and um, are very concerned that they learn the Greek language and about Greek music and dance and uh, all sorts of other customs. I don't think Greek culture is dying out. Now the sponge industry, there is only one remaining working Greek style boat. I think building Greek boats has died out with the last, the last man who was building them is not working anymore on them after an accident. Um, so that style of boat is dying out. Um, there are other, the other boats that are working are not Greek style boats. Um, there are still still people working. I think the sponge industry can come back more, and that's only one aspect of Greek culture. Although the sponge diving that first brought Greeks to Tarpon Springs has given way to tourism as the primary industry here, Greek culture is still alive and well. Tarpon Springs continues to be a highlight of Florida's cultural diversity. You've been watching Florida Frontiers, presented by the Florida Historical Society. I'm Ben Broatmarkle.
The Florida Historical Society presents Florida Frontiers is made possible in part by the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund and by... Florida's Space Coast Office of Tourism, representing destinations from Titusville to Cocoa Beach to Melbourne Beach. The Space Coast has a diverse 72 miles of beach, including surf towns and sea turtle nests. We have inspiring attractions, including the Kennedy Space Center, Brevard Museum of History and Natural Science, and the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge. More information is available at www.visitspacecoast.com. Florida history and culture from the Ice Age to the Space Age is on display at the Brevard Museum of History and Natural Science, located at 2201 Michigan Avenue in Cocoa. The museum has nature trails through 20 acres of three Florida ecosystems. The People of Windover exhibition features information about Florida's prehistoric past and actual artifacts used between 7,000 and 8,000 years ago. More information at brevardmuseum.org.